right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Today, we're going to talk about Tucker. We're going to talk about uh, what we're going to be covering later on tonight on our other sister channel. And we're going to talk about what what the big fuss is about uh, what Tucker is doing, how they are uh, placing it, the divide that it is actually causing. Uh, essentially, folks are saying that he is either a traitor or a hero of free speech, that he is either a journalist or, uh, of course, uh, a Russian propagandist. So there's a there's a lot going on. Of course, this is a big deal. It's it's only a big deal right now uh, because of where we are in the world right now. Uh, it is it is. I I think they've made a lot of good points here on both sides of the argument. Uh, but at the same time, uh, once once you watch this video, you'll understand what the heck is going on. So first of all, if you haven't heard about the fuss, uh, Tucker uh, last night and a few other nights uh, ago, we talked about how. Uh, Tucker was hinting that he might be interviewing Putin. Now, he is not the first one to actually interview Putin. Uh, Putin has been interviewed thousands of times by journalists all over the world. Uh, but this is, I guess, the first time he's being interviewed like this during a conflict. Now, if we were at direct war with Russia, then, yeah, it would be pretty crazy if he was being interviewed and then put out on uh, American TV. I don't know if that's happened before. Again, uh, I bet I probably could have found that pretty easily, but uh, that that's the main point. If we're not at war, again, nobody would give anybody crap for going and interviewing Xi Jinping or uh, the Ayatollah right at this moment, right? It would be called journalism. Uh, again, people are saying that uh, essentially that uh, this is, again, uh, really hypocritical. Uh, this is a meme that has been flying around. It's been pretty much everywhere which is, of course, showing, uh, gosh, I, I forget her name, uh, from 2020 or whatever, 60 Minutes. Uh, it, it shows everyone, and from Walter Cronkite to others, essentially meeting with Putin, and they call it journalism. Uh, when he meets with Putin, it's called treason. Now, it, it, a lot of the folks are saying things like he is a propagandist puppet, that he is carrying Putin's water. On the other hand, uh, in his video, and this is the video we've uh, attached to our website here, He's essentially saying, you know, this is free speech. We this is journal, you know, journalism that we're going to go talk to Putin and uh, that it's exactly this kind of conversation that we need. Now, what I have noticed, and this is just my observation, is that in the comments, it is uh, folks of all varying degrees disagreeing with each other and completely on either one side or the other. Now, we all know that we've been uh, essentially uh, all attempted to be brainwashed over the last few years, either one way or the other or 50 other ways. You know, we've all been affected by the media that we consume, especially when the media that everyone consumes, doesn't matter which one, it, 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 as far as legacy and mainstream, they're all owned by somebody. They're all, you know, paid for, bought and paid for by sponsors they don't say anything bad about this guy because they're sponsored by them. Uh, the other guys don't say anything bad about this guy because they're sponsored by them as well. So it's like, you know, they're not going to say something about, uh, say, a big corporation if especially the, that corporation's banner is before every single show. As far as the interview with Putin... People have been torn and people are afraid to say what they think. They're afraid to agree with Putin because then they are called some sort of traitor. Uh, it may be on purpose that that Putin over the last year especially has said a lot of comments. A lot of his speech is actually viral right now. His speech from February of not this year, but last year is actually viral on the Internet. And it is uh, essentially a, a, a speech that goes over a few paragraphs of what they believe is happening here. Now, those paragraphs are something that a lot of people here actually agree with. Now, is he purposely uh, you know, stating these things that all of these uh, population will actually agree with, the statements he's making, and then making him look like you know, the good guy? Putin is not a good guy, mind you, uh, but he's, uh, again, people debate whether he is the, the exact monster that they uh, portray him to be. As far as what are Tucker's, you know, kind of, uh, I guess, mo you know, what is the motivation here? Well, a lot of us are looking at World War III right now. I have gone back and forth with Tucker. Everybody says, oh, this is this, this is an agent, this is that. I don't know what is true anymore, but I do know
from the looks of it, it's like one of the last people that's basically going exactly against the grain saying, you know, F, F this and, and we're doing it. Uh, personal opinions right now flare up. It doesn't matter who, what kind of size crowd, if it's five people or 5,000, you're going to piss off half the people by what you say if you give your personal opinion. And the problem is, is people are afraid of telling you that personal opinion. I have grown to like Tucker Carlson, and I know that some people think he's this, some people's that. You can't stop that. There is going to be, it doesn't matter what person you point out, half the people are going to say that's a shill. Half people are going to say it's this. It's going to say that. It's the same with everybody now. That's how we've been trained. We've been trained to uh, basically disseminate and, and pick apart people to where we say that they're bad, they're good, they're this. If we like them, we don't like we're them. We're in we Moscow su- we're, We support them, we don't. All of this is happening right now. Now, he is in Moscow right now, as he just said. And, of course, he's talking about how he is going to, uh, uh, of course, go and interview Putin. They say this is going to break the Internet. Again, another point is that Elon is going to host it. He says that he will not take it down. And who knows what will happen there, because once he puts that up, if if he or Putin says something that the the rest of the Internet doesn't like, or something that they they consider you know unfactual, will they then put pressure on Elon to take it down? If it then gets taken down, what ends up happening? I highly doubt there's going to be protests in the street, but again, uh, it's probably going to cause its own firestorm if they end up taking it down. Elon Musk himself, the guy who owns X, now is in the news today because he is actually uh, in a suit against Disney. Uh, and he even offered Gina Carano, uh, fired off of Star Wars, to join him. Ooh, so there's a, much of it. a lot going on as far as Tucker Carlson, X, uh, as far as uh, the, the the free speech and what is happening with it. Uh, but essentially, it, the, what people are saying, it's it's very, very torn. I feel like this is also a dividing thing to where now it is dividing even separate parties. Now it is is, it is dividing... Uh, the left and dividing the right. You have people on both sides and there are causes and events and things that are essentially even uh, splitting again. It's like an atom splitting, only now they're splitting another atom and splitting again and splitting again. There's so many divides right now. It is why the general theme of the subject of what's going on is civil conflict. People are talking about civil war more than they've ever talked about before. Uh, at least since the last actual civil war, and that is because of how divided we are. Young and old, this religion versus that religion, this color versus that color, uh, it, of course, the the different place versus this place. You're from there, I'm from here. Uh, you're on that side, I'm on this side. You're on this team, I'm on that team. It has never been more divided. And I just want to point out that we all need to recognize that when this kind of this thing happens on such a broad spectrum, that there's most likely outside help to have it happen that far and that fast. As far as our country getting divided this broadly and in every single category, it's almost like somebody is going down a checklist and saying, how can we divide this base? This base is really, really strong. We need to tear it up and basically grind it into bits and pieces. So what subject could we get that will absolutely put people on odder ends? Why would you do that? Well, when you tear people apart, when nobody is getting along, when nobody is working together, you have yourself chaos and you also have a very weak, weak country. And this isn't just our country. You can see this happening in every country in the world. I have seen this and covered this over five or six years. And I do consider as far as our opinions, they are journalistic. It's looking at the patterns, looking at the news of what's happening, looking at the same scenario. It doesn't matter what language they speak. It's happening everywhere. I've given you a thousand examples from all of the stories that we've actually covered. And all of these examples uh, are basically splitting people into one party or the other. It's, it's insane because they're even having the same arguments in, in, in uh, languages and in places that you wouldn't think would have, you know, uh, rednecks versus the, the fancy elite. Uh, but they are. They, it doesn't matter what country you go to. It's like somebody applied the same filter to a photo around the planet, and they're saying, you know, post to Instagram, this is what civil conflict looks like. In many other countries, we've already seen it fall down into a pit of civil conflict and even a a, a coup d'etat in some countries. We've seen grids go down. 
Uh, we've seen major countries, rich countries, lose their entire grids and basically be reset. The United States and others are actually waiting for this to happen. And we're hoping it doesn't. But again, this is what people should be preparing for uh, just in case. If Even if it's a 0.1%, a lot of us preppers are looking at the events of right now and we're saying this needs, uh, this needs to be paid attention to. As far as the uh, Carlson interview, it is going to be on X and they say it's not going to be taken down. Who knows? Just talking about it may be uh, a big problem here in a few days, depending on what's said. Uh, but this is a big deal. This is uh, any other time an interview of any president, doesn't matter when, you would think that that would be considered journalism. I consider it, you know, hey, let me hear the guy for myself. Uh, let me be the judge. Most likely, I'm going to say this guy's full of crap. But if not, I, I was able to judge for myself. Don't tell me as an adult or the rest of you as adults what we can or cannot hear because we might be swayed by an opinion that we don't even know exists yet. So again, I hope that all of you end up speaking your minds about this too, even if you have an opinion that most of your peers all around you do not have or you're afraid of them declaring you something. The labeling is getting really old between YouTubers, between creators, between uh, celebrities, between sides, all of this stuff. I, I think that eventually we're either going to go to civil conflict or we're going to get tired of basically being divided and we're going to say, you know, screw you guys, we're going to be friends. That's how it should be. That's in my opinion. But again, it, it, people are not going to see eye to eye on these issues because they are the issues they picked that will never be seen eye to eye on. So I hope you guys pay attention tonight. We're going to talk about the finished plant to hike ammunition production fivefold on the next show uh, due to Russia's war in UKR. Or is it? Or are it Finland, again, just joined NATO. U.S. greatest adversaries to hold massive joint military exercise, China, Iran, and Russia. We have NATO is pushing the Russia-Ukraine conflict towards a world war published by the Global Times. That's China saying that. Nowhere to hide. China's scientists uh, develop... Uh, a game-changing military surveillance device for electronic warfare. They're going to be able to open it up, and it doesn't matter if they're on encrypted uh, encrypted radios. If you're on a ham radio, it doesn't matter what it is. They will be able to detect a signal. They will be able to find you anywhere and everywhere. doesn't matter how low and how secret your communications are, how secure they are. They will be able to detect you are there. This is a massive, game-changing thing, and heading into a world war with China, it's not something we want to see. We're going to talk about that and many other things over on Marfugel uh, TV. So join us over on our sister channel. Go to the website, marfugelnews.com. If you haven't already, if you want to support us, we're independent as well. We're on our own. Make sure to go protect yourself uh, and go over to EMP Shield. You can actually get the same protection that agencies like DHS and DOD are getting. Uh, and of course, now the Demso team helping protect the Texas grid is working with EMP Shield. It's a device that can protect your cars, trucks, motorcycles, and boats, ham radios, generators, gas, and solar in the case of the Flex, and your home from not only EMP, but CME as well. Marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Make sure to use the code MARF. You'll get $50 off per device, and you'll help our channel at the same time. We'll see you over on Marfugel TV. Have a great night, guys. Be safe, be prepared, and MARF out. What do you think of Tuck? What do you think of the interview? Do you think it should happen? Do you think we should be the judges?